Hey there, welcome to tutorial number 9 of the Easy jQuery series, part of easyprogramming.net. In today's tutorial, we're going to look at something that we have already seen in the past, the CSS jQuery method. I've used this method in the past to showcase changes that are happening because of our code, and CSS makes it very easy to see and recognize those changes. So today, let's dig a little deeper into the method by looking at some examples. Uh, in my HTML here, I have set up a couple of divs here called box and random, as well as a, this p tag called, you know, and that has the text. This is this text is in a p tag. Uh, let's change the color of all text. So let's actually do the simplest uh, CSS method example that we can think of, and let's change the color of all p tags to something. Uh, we'll do that CSS. We'll do color blue. So at the very least, CSS, you need to send it two parameters, two arguments. Uh, you need the CSS property. In my case, I'm choosing color, which will affect the text color and the value of that property. And I'm choosing blue. You can use hex code. You can use, uh, if you're using width, you can do pixels, uh, put, it in, put it in quotes. And once I run it, you'll see that all of the text inside the paragraph tag turned to blue. I can do red, it'll turn to red, but let's set it back to blue. So this is the a minimal example of how the CSS property works. If you're wondering how do you send in multiple CSS properties, uh, because in CSS you don't usually just edit one property, you, you'll set in like a height, a, a width, a background color, a text align, etc. So CSS makes it very easy. So let's target this ID here, it's called box, you know, it says I'm a box. Let's target box and let's take a look at what we'll do. So you can send in one property at a time. You can chain them, uh, you can keep chaining them, but writing uh, all this code in, cha in a chain is gonna get annoying and redundant. So you can also send in a, an object, uh, a CSS, uh, an object, uh, a JavaScript object with the name value pairs of the CSS properties. So since I did color earlier, if I do color, let's do dark blue this time, this is the exact same as doing this. The only benefit of using the curly braces is that I can keep sending in more property values, properties and values. So I can do uh, background color, Oops. color. Uh, let's do light blue for some contrast. Let's do width, 100 pixels. Let's do height, 100 pixels. Quotes. And let's do, uh, let's do a text align center. So in this CSS method, I'm sending in five different CSS properties uh, in this one call. And let's update and run it. And you'll see that it turns it into a box, puts in the text in there. The background is light blue. The width is 100 pixels. The height is 100 pixels, etc. It's pretty pretty easy, right? Uh, in our next example, let's actually see if we can read the color value of the box here. Um, so let's do something like box uh, dot on click. So if you click on the box, we'll do uh, function. Whoops. Let's do console log. Let's log it to the console. Nothing special. We'll do you know, this dot uh, CSS and we'll do background color. Let's see what the background color is. So if you don't set in a name value pair like I did here with the color in the blue, if you just send in something like this, what will happen is that it'll just return the value of that CSS property. Uh, it makes it, it it's, it's a great way of reading something, uh, reading CSS from uh, your code, because it's not always about writing code, sometimes it's about reading something. So let's open the console lock. Remember, you can right click inspect, control shift I, etc. Uh, now, if I run this, it's still blue. If I click on this, it'll say RGB 173, 216, 230. I can click on it as many times as I want and it'll just keep adding to it. Uh, and that's the value of the blue here. If I change the light blue to, you know, light red, let's run this. Uh, light red is the thing. Let's do pink. All right, and if I click on this, it does 255192203 because that's the, the RGB, uh, the color palette. Fairly simple. Uh, let's do one more really quick uh, example with this randomize me button that I have set up here, which 
every time you click on it, it'll randomize the colors within the box, and uh, and you can click on it to get the uh, to log the the RGB values of the background color. So let's actually do a random function. We'll do um, return mat.floor mat.random um, times 255 because that's uh, how the colors work from 0 to 255. Uh, 0 is black, 255 is... Uh, wait, or is that the round? Ah, I forget. But anyway, uh, if you're wondering where uh, the, the random generator code comes from, it's actually from my uh, random jump, run number generator uh, tutorial that I did back in JavaScript uh, back in February 18, 2017. So feel free to check out that tutorial. Uh, I do have the formula in the code here, as well as a video showing you exactly how to do it and the link to the JS Fiddle. Uh, and I just modified it to do a minimum of 0 to a maximum of 255. So every time this runs, it'll return a random value. Missing semicolon. I am missing. There we go. I had too many parentheses in there. So let's actually move this up here and let's do random dot on click. Let's do function. Let's close this and then we'll do box dot css. Uh, let's do, we're targeting the background color, and we need to send in the RGB, so we'll do RGB, the open parentheses, we'll do rand, open that, blah, comma, concatenate, uh, another rand, concatenate that with the comma, and another, and the last rand and close parentheses. Um, JS Fiddle highlights that it's being closed here. And uh, no, don't need, a, don't need a semicolon there because I'm using the curly braces. Uh, I put a, a comma here if I were to add in more properties, more uh, object properties, but I'm not going to. I'm gonna update and run it. So if I click on randomize me, where did I mess up? Let's see. Uh, here's here's what I'm, where I messed up. Uh, I didn't target the box ID. So if I run it now, if I do random, there you go, it changes colors randomly. And if I open the console, I'll clear this. If we have my click on randomize me, I'll click on this, the value changes, and you can see exactly that the numbers are pretty random. Uh, well, anyway, this is all I have for the CSS tutorial, uh, the CSS method tutorial. I would recommend you read up on the documentation on the jQuery API website. Uh, there's a lot of useful information, and CSS is a great way to showcase that your code is actually doing something. Changing the CSS dynamically is pretty pretty cool. Uh, thanks for watching this Easy jQuery tutorial. If you have any questions, please ask in the comments below or on easyprogramming.net. If you have suggestions for new topics, please let me know. Uh, I hope me zooming into the code is, makes it a little bit more readable, uh, as well as moving the the, the layout a little bit. Uh, I'm always open to suggestions. So thanks for watching. Have a great one.